Uh, hey guys, what's up? I'm here with a Blu-ray DVD collection update. I don't have much here, actually, um, in the ways of, uh, like, a lot. I mean, all together, this, this stuff all cost me, like, over $100. But, uh, it's not like I have a big-ass haul from, like, a convention or anything. Um, but I did pick up a few things, and I've been waiting to show some of them off. Uh, I bought the Female Prisoner Scorpion box set, finally, from Arrow, and uh, I don't know if it's in frame, I can't remember if it was or not, but right here, I moved my Hotline Miami poster over here, but uh, back here, right here I put the poster that comes with the uh, box set of the uh, poster artwork for the first one on one side, and then the other side is, the, is for... Uh, 701 Grudge Song, which is the worst one in the series, but um, I wanted to have it in the background because I really like the poster artwork for the original films. But um, yeah, this is like a $70 set that I scored for about 30 bucks, thanks to uh, Amazon hooking me up with uh, gift cards for signing up for credit cards and shit. Um, really nice set, boxes, I'm already ruining it. The box is a uh, pretty sturdy cardboard. The little booklet it comes with, with interviews from the guy. I know it has an interview in here from the guy who wrote the original manga that the uh, this series of films is based on. The original manga isn't called Female Prisoner Scorpion. It's actually just called um, Sasori. Uh, I know there's an interview in here with Miko Kaji from the 90s, which is interesting, I guess. Um... But it's really nice, like, hardback fucking book. Really, really nice. The artwork on there is really fucking nice. And uh, just like with these releases, the artwork on these releases is also very nice. I put on the, I flipped all the releases to the original artwork just because I really like the original artwork. But, um, the, all these are Blu-ray DVDs. But the uh, new artwork for all these releases are also, the new artwork is also really good. Mm. Uh, I know I've heard some people complain about the lack of features on this set, and I can definitely kind of agree that there is, that there aren't as many features that I want there to be. I wish I could have gotten Miko Kaji to do um, audio commentary or something. Because because uh, it would be interesting to hear what she has to say now about these films. Because um, I know she's still alive. But uh, this is the second one. This is fucking Jailhouse 41. This one is probably the second best in the series, in my opinion. Um, like a lot of film series, the first one is the best. And the second one is a very close second. Um... And as always with Arrow, you get one of these little art cards, which I have no idea what this is for, but there's other releases here on the back. Stop beeping, you fucking cunt. Uh. But, um... You know, I really like the artwork. It's a very nice set. Um, yeah, the extras aren't like... It isn't like there's any audio commentary or anything, because I'm pretty sure, I'm like 99.9% .9 sure the director of all these movies, or at least the first three of the movies are from the same director. I'm pretty sure he's dead, and I'm pretty sure the director of the fourth one is dead as well. Um, so really all we can get here is just like, it's just trailers, maybe an, maybe an interview with the assistant director or something like that. So I can definitely understand that, and, I can hear, and I've heard some people that the picture quality um, on some of these restorations isn't very good, and I can agree with that to a certain extent. I watched Beast's Table, um, when I got the set, because I had recently rewatched the first two. Um, and so I rewatched Beast's Stable, and Beast's Stable, um, had some pretty shoddy, like at times it didn't look that great, other times it looked fine, and I think that has to do with the fact that these films are, um, are like nearly f over 40 years old, so you gotta kind of forgive. Um, 
because due to obs obscurity, these films have kind of gone unnoticed and un like protected from the elements. Um, on to the next thing. Uh, I hit up that fucking 50% off Criterion sale because um, I said I wasn't going to, but I got too tempted and I happened to be near Barnes & Noble. I got Multiple Maniacs from John Waters. This has got a new audio commentary on it. For, well, it says, yeah, new audio commentary on it from John Waters, which I think will be interesting. There's uh, interviews from multiple, the actor, multiple actors. This is the 4K restoration of Multiple Maniacs, which is really cool. This is um, John Waters' second feature film after Mondo Trasho, which I also own. Mondo Trasho, Trasho is pretty bad. But Multiple Maniacs, I, I, from what I remember, I watched it a couple years back. I really liked it. I'm going to have to rewatch it. Um, it's weird to think that a movie like this is on Criterion, but then again, Criterion also has the rights to like House, which is an immensely weird 70s Japanese horror film. But happy they picked this up. I scored this this for 15 bucks, which is cheaper than it is on Amazon. Um, I was surprised I found it for that cheap with the 50% off. Um, I also ended up buying the Blu-ray of Salo or the 120 Days of Sodom. No fucked up horror movie aficionado. No, no nobody. No, no fucked up movie aficionado's collection is complete without Salo, whether or not you like the film. Um, I haven't seen this film since I like first saw it in like probably my sophomore year of high school, I think. Um, but either way, Salo is a very interesting movie. I remember not thinking that much of it, but in recent years, upon remembering it, as well as upon looking up analysis, like looking at analysis videos, um, and reading up on like the deeper themes of the film and symbolism within the film and stuff like that, the messages of the film, I could definitely see some of it in there, so I figured I'd buy it to A, to rewatch it, and B, because again, no fucking extreme horror movie fans, com um, collection is complete without Cello. You're bullshitting yourself if you don't think, uh, you can be a fucked up horror movie fan and not own that movie. And last, but most certainly not least, I got this one today, I decided to buy it. Um, after it already had come out, like, on Tuesday, so I bought it on, like, Thursday, and it arrived today. Um, it's Beyond the Darkness, which is the Joe D'Amato film. I love Joe D'Amato's movies, um, at least from what I've seen from him. Um, Absurd and Anthropophagus are really good. And I know, uh, Porno Holocaust is kind of awful. Um, I can't remember what else Joe D'Amato directed, but this is probably his best movie, um, do you know, it doesn't really come off as cheesy at all, like, uh, Anthropophagus or Absurd does. It comes off fairly serious, it's gross, it contains, has necrophilia, cannibalism, you know, human taxidermy, it's got it all. And, uh, I love that they didn't put the original poster artwork for the cover art, uh, because this artwork on the cover, um, basically sets up, you kind of know what you're getting into with a cover like this, at least for the most part. With the original poster art, the poster artwork was nice, but it doesn't really give, give a good idea of portraying, it doesn't get across the idea that this is a psychological horror film. It makes it look like a supernatural horror film, and I thought, that's what I thought it was when I went into it years ago. I rewatched it today, the transfer's good. Um, it's got some good features on here, including a hour-long kind of mini documentary interview with Joe D'Amato that was done like right before his death in 1999. Uh, yeah, I really like this, really like this movie. It's, it's kind of minimalistic, it's low on characters, um, the sets are very limited. I think there's like maybe three or four different like settings for, for the film. Other than that, it's, it's fairly small. Um, like with a lot of uh, seven releases. I think it's a good release overall, but I wish it had like reversible poster, art, like reversible cover art. Because I'm not saying I would like flip it to the original cover art because I prefer this anyway. But it would be cool to have the option. Uh, this release also comes with the soundtrack on CD, which the soundtrack for the film was done by none other than Goblin. Um, 
Who the fuck doesn't love Gobble? If you don't love Gobble, you're wrong, man. Um, but yeah, probably not the best Severn release I own, or that I think is like the best release. The best release is probably Dr. Butcher, because this release was just packed with shit. Plus, it comes with a barf bag. I mean, that's just classic. Fucking, fucking classic right there. I kind of wish um, this came with a slipcover, though. Uh, but that is actually it for um, this update. Um, I'm Biscabooble Reviews. Signing off. Peace.